Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Modded Minecraft. We're playing Feed the Beast, we're playing Revelation, we're playing Feed the Beast Revelation Plus. I'm your humble host, see you later, and welcome back. Look at our base here. I've been doing a little bit of stuff, I don't know if you could tell. Uh, let me just recap on some of the things that I've been working on off camera. Uh, first of all, I've been checking out this mod, Rustic. This is an Iron Lantern. This is a gargoyle. I thought those were really cool. And this is a chair. <laughs> but I have, uh, I, I've been just taking a look at uh, some of this stuff for Rustic and it's really cool. So uh, I've got a custom made door here from Malice's Doors. Uh, the outer ring part is made of uh, cyan clay, I wanna say. Cyan uh, terracotta and then just clear glass for the top and bottom portions and then check this out i've got curtains covering up the doors and they open and close isn't that cool so i just thought that was really neat if uh if we want to and it's nighttime we don't see, want people peeking in our windows well i don't have curtains over here but at least for the door anyway i thought that was kind of neat so yeah rustic again here's some candles uh these candles can be placed on the wall and it makes a little sconce and then but if you place it on the uh, let's see if I break it and I place it uh, down it actually makes a little candle holder so it depends on how you place it uh, but I thought that looked pretty cool uh, I've made a little couple of accents here using the uh, architecture craft mod and I did the same thing with these arches over the doorways here and then in the preparation for this episode I've done quite a lot so uh, I went ahead and windowed in, so there's windows uh, now in all of these spaces. Uh, this is some uh, clear glass from Tinkers. I don't have Optifine uh, running, and I mentioned that in the last episode because uh, it's causing a lot of uh, texture issue problems. So the fact that we can still have connected textures with the Tinkers glass, uh, that takes care of that. Now over here, uh, I've just been, I started doing just a little bit of decorating, again, rustic. These are uh, some pots just made from terracotta. They actually have storage inside, which is really cool. And if you stack one on top of another one, I thought that looks pretty neat. It makes a little uh, too, too high textured pot. So in here, this is our workroom. And what I've done is I went ahead and hooked up the power. So we've got the power coming down. I'll go out back here and show you. So there's our windmill power going over into our capacitor bank and then I just ran that down and it's going through the wall here through this stone brick and I showed you guys how to do that in a previous episode as well using the connectors. <coughs> that comes down here to a little breaker switch. Neep. 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 <laughs> I believe that sound effect is actually... Uh, I believe that's actually Direwolf 20 going, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Again, Rustic, thank you very much. Here is a uh, chandelier, and those have the candles placed around. I thought that looked really cool. Also for lighting in this room, I actually used some of the uh, little tiles and made these little uh, pieces of glowstone with a uh, just some uh, gray terracotta around it and then I place those along the walls and it lights up this room really well because the cool thing about the little tiles uh, I don't actually know much about uh, chisel and bits but the glowstone when you use little tiles it still gives off the same amount of light as a full glowstone block so uh, obviously that doesn't look like glowstone but if you uh, chisel the glowstone if you just look at uh, glowstone here glowstone uh, I actually made a chiseled version which is this glowstone panel and the glowstone panel has a very smooth texture and these are the center of the block so it's really smooth looking and I thought that looked pretty cool for lighting so what else have we done uh, let's take a look at this little guy this is really neat this is a clipboard from bibliocraft and you can see I have it placed on the wall here if I sneak and right click it I can pick it up and you can see I can still read it this connect power storage system move out of bunker set up shop and then sneak right click it places it back on the wall and it acts if you just right click regular it acts like a kind of like a book 
Um, and the cool thing about it is, is you can make a little checklist uh, out of the different items on here. And then if I put it on a wall, I can still right click and interact with it, which is really neat. I could change the pages. It's really cool. I've never used one before, and I think we're going to get a lot of use out of it. So, uh, like it says on the clipboard over there, it says connect power and then storage system. So, let's take a look real quick at storage system. So, what I've done for storage system is I've set up some of these uh, modular storage uh, containers. And the way they work is you put, put in a storage module. If I take it out, see, this is just a container. Um, an interface if you will it doesn't have anything in it uh, on its own you have to craft up these uh, storage modules now the storage modules have different tiers there's tier one tier two tier three and it takes each tier to make the next tier up and the highest tier is just some blocks of gold blocks of quartz and blocks of blocks of redstone uh, with a chest and that basically gives you the storage capacity of 300 stacks uh, and it is 300 stacks of items. It doesn't actually count by stacks. It's just 300 times 64. If you want to do the math, you can figure out how much that stored. But as you can see here, this one is almost full. This one is full. There's 300 of 300 and 300 of 300 in this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to craft a couple more. And let's just go ahead and do that together real quick. So I need storage. Let's first of all, let me go to uh, over here. I'll go at RF tools and then storage. And we need a couple of these modular storage units. So I'll craft up two of these and then I will go ahead and place them down uh, just like this. And we need a couple more of those uh, modules. So we need a uh, tier one. So let's go ahead and make two of those. One, two. All right. And they don't stack. And then we're going to make tier two. And you can see it just went from gold nuggets and quartz up to gold and quartz. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see it knows I have these two in my inventory over here. So I can go one two and that crafted the tier twos and let's go ahead and do tier three and then one and two so we have two more of the tier three uh, storage modules and that expands our storage by another 300 stacks each so uh, as you can see this one already took some items in I believe oh no no that was it just coming online now one of the cool things also is these don't need power but in order to interact with all these, as you just saw when I was doing the crafting, I'm using this storage scanner. Now the storage scanner is really cool. You can set it to scan however many blocks around. Now it doesn't see these two new ones yet, so I'll have to do a rescan, and then it adds those two extra modules uh, into the system. I can access all one, two, three, four, five, all five of these modular storage boxes from this one storage scanner is that cool yes that's cool it's a very uh cheap in my opinion uh, early game way of getting a lot of storage in a small space because uh in the back in the bunker we were just using those storage crates and those things were getting really full and it was getting really difficult to uh, manage the storage now the other cool thing about this if i just go back out here you can also craft up one of these guys which is a storage control screen module okay that's made just with a chest and some redstone uh, excuse me a crafting table some redstone iron and some black dye which is really cheap it's not expensive at all and then you can use that in combination with the storage tablet now the storage tablet is a little bit more expensive it takes an emerald uh, but what I've done is I've actually gone, if I look at my backpack, I actually have a villager uh, inside of this capturing wand. Now I found this capturing wand through doing a little bit of uh, adventuring and uh, this, these were actually, I, found, I think I found these in uh, one in a desert temple 
And another one I found in a, um, what do you call it? In one of those Lost Cities um, uh, chest, in, in the loot chest. So uh, what I can do is I just take the villager and put him down. And then I think this one trades, uh, he's a toolsmith or an armorsmith. So he trades uh, coal. And if I just look in here in our system, coal, you can see we've got uh, 127 uh, blocks of coal and or, it's not and, but it's and or uh, 1,138 coal. Now that's just from our manual mining that we've been doing. And the reason I'm saying and or, I'll just show you, is because I do have a little bit of some storage crates, uh, excuse me, basic drawers set up down here and the scanner will see all of these uh, compacting drawers and the drawer controller it will not see the basic drawers uh, i wish it didn't see the compacting drawers i really want it to just see the drawer controller but as you can see with the compacting drawers i've got uh, a way of getting uh, quartz into blocks and then blocks of quartz back into regular quartz uh, very easily and then once you put gold and iron in, it shows all of the different things you can do with that. And the system sees all of those. Same thing with redstone, lapis, and the coal. So as you can see, if I look here, it says 126 blocks of coal or 1,138 pieces of coal. So that's the reason why it shows up both in our system. Now, I do have a way to get items into this uh, using our dank null. I made a little device over here that is called a docking station. That's the Dank Null docking station and it just puts items into the drawers only. The problem is if I take items out, let's say I go back to coal, okay, if I take out a stack of coal, fine, uh, that pulled it from the drawers, but if I put it back in again, you can see I still have 1138. But if I go downstairs, I'm not sure if the system is smart enough to put it back where it came from. So if I come down here, you see it says 1074. So what's happened is, is I've taken it from the compacting drawer through the drawer controller and, and the uh, storage scanner. But when I put it back, it didn't know it was supposed to put it back into the drawer. And what it's done is it's just stored it in here into the modular storage uh, units. So I've probably got a lot of stone and things that I've, I've pulled out stacks, used one or two, then put them back again. And I've probably got a lot of uh, those, uh, you know, high items um, like cobblestone, stone. Um, what else do I have a lot of? I've got a lot of uh, wood, you know, like spruce wood and oak wood. I've been harvesting up a lot of that. But anyway, so the storage tablet, once you uh, get that little screen controller, you shift right click it on the storage scanner and then you craft it together. Uh, as you can see, if I wanted to, I could take it out of the storage tablet, but there it is. It's set to the storage scanner. And then when you craft them together, it gives you this tablet and it basically is a remote control uh, device for accessing the storage scanner from anywhere so it, no matter how far away I am as long as that chunk is loaded I can right click and open up it works cross-dimensionally and it does take power uh, as you can see I have uh, 19,600 RF so what I made over here uh, you just hook this up to our regular uh, electrical system from immersive engineering if I right click on there, you can see this charging station takes the item and it doesn't take very long to put in uh, 20,000 RF. And then you just right click it again, it gives it back to you and you can see now it's full uh, 20,000 RF. Now it doesn't use very much power. Uh, just from opening it, it uses 100 RF every time you open it. And then when you put blocks in and out again, I believe that takes a little bit of RF as well. But I've been using it like crazy uh, all over the place and haven't been having any problems at all. So that's basically our storage uh, system. And then this part over the top, it's just decorative. And then there's an anvil down here. I just did that as a little bit of decoration. 
So for this room, uh, I've set up some of our other uh, pieces from the other mods, an engineer's workbench. Uh, I did get a radio set. Uh, this is a radio set from the airdrop. And uh, that's it's a non-functional block. It's decorative mostly. But I thought that was pretty cool. I made that with the little tiles. And it all fits within one block. And it looks really neat. I think it looks like a little ham radio uh, set up. We've got our architect saw bench. We've got our little tiles crafting table. Then we've got a couple of tinkers blocks. And we've got this guy. Which is a flans. And then I made a couple of these things so I could show you. Uh, if we take our Winchester and put it in here. We can uh, put attachments on here. Like a red dot. Or we can put a silencer. On here now if you look you see how the model doesn't line up properly and that's because these items are mostly made for the modern weapons and this one weapon comes from the zombie pack so I don't want to do any attachments uh, to it but one thing that you can do if I just grab some ink so let me use my storage tablet I'll grab some ink and I'll just shift click to give one single item and then when I go back in here if I put the gun in it sees that I have one and in my inventory and the little square turns green. If you click that, I have now changed our Winchester from wood to black coloring. And I think that looks pretty cool. I like that. I'm going to leave it that way, I think. Uh, if you want to convert it back, you can and it doesn't cost anything. You just click here and you can convert it back uh, to its original. And the other thing is, I thought that would be really cool if I was over here working on stuff if I just had a little display stand so I've got a flans gun rack here which is really cool because you just right click on it and you can see the 3d model now I did test out a couple of other uh, displays and unfortunately some of the other displays if you see I have you know the gun itself is a 3d model but down here if you look at the little uh, uh, right down here the icon is the you know pixelated uh, item icon and if you put it on anything else it actually just shows up as that little uh, icon and I don't think that looks nearly as good as this really cool 3d model here so that'll be uh, a, a good way to display our weapons now I do want to mention real quick a lot of the items from Flans mod does not have a crafting recipe so if I go here and I just type in uh, I think it's just a gun rack you can see here's the uh, gun rack. There's no way to craft this, so I did have to gift myself. And I will be doing that with some more items as well. I'll be gifting myself things that don't have crafting recipes. Uh, and I think that's fine, even in survival, because what I do is I say, okay, this thing, it looks like it probably takes a couple of pieces of iron. And uh, so let's see, iron. And this is just, you know, I'm just guessing. So let me take a couple of pieces of iron. And then what else? It looks like oak wood planks. So oak wood planks. And it probably takes two or three. So I'll grab a couple of those and throw them in the trash can. Just like this. Very simple. So now I feel like that legitimizes the fact that I've paid for this item uh, that I had to be gifted. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that's fair enough. And I'll continue to do that because I really do uh, not like uh, to be illegitimate in these games. I love the challenge of having to get all the resources uh, to craft all of the items. So some of the things that don't have crafting recipes, uh, like Flans Mod, and also the other one that doesn't have crafting recipes a lot is the... Uh, uh, is the varied commodities so if you look here if I, let's say I want uh, this uh, skull I click on it and there's no recipe there's just simply not crafting recipes I think because most of these props are made for setting up uh, adventure maps and things like that so most people are just using them in creative uh, to set up the maps now uh, some of them if you craft on if you click on them I have found do have a crafting recipe and then when you do this uh, sometimes like that gold sword was just a stick so let me grab a stick uh, stivik okay so let me grab a stick and then I'll just go over here to this uh, crafting bench and see when I put it in I actually don't get it 
So again, uh, uh, if I wanted one of those, which I don't right now, but if I did, I would just uh, control click over here. That gives me into the cheat mode for JEI. I can pick up the item just like this, grab one, and it said that it needed a stick, so I can then throw away the stick, and I've uh, even traded myself. Uh, that didn't work. Now it worked. So there you go. And then now I've got this uh, golden sword from um, buried commodities. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so what's the next thing? Uh, you might have noticed this giant glowing doohickey over here in the middle of the thing here, and you may notice that I have no XP. That is because I've been banking my XP by standing on this XP drain, and that goes into this drum. Now this drum currently is holding 191 buckets of XP. Each one of these tanks from open blocks, there's two here, holds 16 buckets. So there's 32 buckets of XP here. And so what happened was I died again. Yeah. Yep. I died again. I was in the nether and I was building a, a bridge across some lava and I fell right into the lava and lost all my XP. Luckily, I didn't lose my stuff though because we have the uh, gravestones uh, in from also from open blocks. And that saves your inventory. So I basically just had to go where the lava was and put a bunch of uh, netherrack around uh, down into the lava and then clear out the hole around it. Jump down into the hole, grab my gravestone, grabbed all my stuff, and I got the heck out of there. Uh, so anyway, if you want XP back, you just craft one of these XP showers. Now, in a previous mod pack that I played before, this shower XP shower drain, uh, you just right-clicked on it. And it would turn it on and off and there was a cool little sound that sounded like a you know rear, 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 turning on and off and uh, I believe it, it was from that if it wasn't then it's possibly from uh, another mod that was called mob grinding utilities I can't remember perfectly but this one actually doesn't turn on unless you give it a redstone signal so I've just got a little lever down here and if I turn it on you can see XP is draining out and I'm collecting it and it comes out of the top of that tank up there and then if I want to bank it away I can just stand on top of the drain and it drains it all back into here uh, now I can automate this so that I put a fluid pipe uh, here that takes out and then puts in here uh, so that I can uh, more easily get it out now one thing I don't know is uh, if I can can you put this on here and then give it a red ah you can okay so I could have just uh, I didn't need these tanks at all I just needed to put this on the barrel and give it a redstone signal ah that's very neat so I might come pack this a little bit later on and get rid of these tanks because I I think this looks cool the uh, green looks cool and it does give off light as well uh, but it's a little bit distracting and a little bit of an eyesore uh, for our shop over here Okay, so uh, to complete the shop tour, I would like to show you this. This is a very cool. This is an external heater from Immersive Engineering, and these are just regular vanilla furnaces, but I'm going to take some sand, and I just want to show you this because it is really cool. If I just take some sand out, uh, I've got these storage crates set up with, uh, uh, what do you call them, item transfer nodes. And I'm using the flat transfer nodes, uh, so you can actually put them in between two blocks, uh, which is really neat. And it basically just, you know, replaces the need for putting a hopper, and it makes it a little more compact. But if I take, let's say, a half a stack of this, uh, it drops it in here to the furnace. This external heater will turn on, and then this furnace, with no other fuel inside, starts going. And it also smelts at a much faster rate than a vanilla uh, furnace normally would. So this thing is a really cool early game for setting up a powered furnace array. And as you can see, it, the, the items are being pulled out and they're dropping down into this storage crate below. Uh, these ones up here do not have any uh, internal or external storage. So they're just manual. But both of these, uh, this one and this one, uh, can receive items from the top 
and output the items uh, on the bottom. So that's really cool. And you can see all four of these uh, are running from this one external heater, uh, which is really cool. Now, all of the stuff in this room, uh, including our atomic reconstructor that I showed you at the end of last episode, all of these are working from that one windmill and our capacitor bank. So as long as I'm not doing too much stuff at once, uh, there's plenty of power from that one windmill to run all of this stuff. Now I really want to get into a, a mob farm soon and I know that the stuff that I want to get that comes from in industrial foregoing, which are going to be, if I look up at industrial, Industrial? Nope. I-N-D. Industrial. Okay, industrial foregoing. And if I look up the mob crusher, uh, this guy right here, this one is going to use a lot more power than I'm making. And uh, But we're going to need this uh, to get our mob farm going because this is going to get us all of our mob drops. To, to make this... You basically need plastic. Plastic comes from smelting dry rubber, which comes from crafting up tiny dry rubber, and that comes from a latex processing unit. This doesn't actually use very much power, but it does use power. And you can see I have one uh, right up here. And as you can see, it is actually operating. It's uh, making a tiny dry rubber, okay? I've got water coming in from this uh, sink from cooking from blockheads and I kind of wanted to try out different pipes so this was a little bit cumbersome to uh, wire up but this is a fluid pump from immersive and that's going into these fluid pipes and piping the water into the bottom of this from this sink now the cool thing about the sink is you know you can also use it <laughs> if you get dirty hands from all your crafting you can come over here and right click on it and wash your hands uh, but it also is an infinite water source. Uh, it acts as an infinite water tank. And that's supplying all of the water that we need for our latex processing unit. Now we also need latex. And that's coming from these guys right over here. The tree fluid extractors. And I basically just have four of them set up. Piping into an iron drum. Uh, it is empty right now. As you can see because everything is being pulled out and put over there but this uh, pump is pumping out of the tank and into the side of the latex processing unit these guys do not require power the tree fluid extractors but what they do require is wood so I just have a placer facing up and I put a stack or a few uh, spruce logs in here and then over some time these guys will break the block the more of them you, you only you don't need four Okay, it doesn't actually give you any more fluid, but it does break the block faster uh, so that you can produce more fluid over a shorter amount of time. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I've got that going into there. And then what's happening is you can see the tiny dry, the tiny rubber pops in here for just a second. And then this item transfer node here is pulling it out and putting it into the side of this uh, tier one crafter. Now, I've got this crafter set up for a dry rubber. If I just double click on this, you can see it takes uh, nine tiny dried rubbers and makes a dry rubber. All items in the input, input slot are uh, consumed and the results of the crafting operation are going into the output buffer. Now, right now, right now I have this hopper locked, uh, so it's not going in. But as you can see, just over a short amount of time, I already have all of this tiny dry rubber and there's already four stacks of dry rubber in here. So if we just unlock this hopper, it will start dropping those dry rubbers in there, automatically smelting. And then very soon you can see here we have plastic. What is the plastic good for? Well, like I said before, you need plastic for all of these different things. The mob slaughter factory, the mob duplicator, and the mob detector. All of these items uh, of blocks from industrial foregoing use plastic. So we are going to need uh, a, a lot of plastic uh, if we want to make a lot of those blocks. I already have made up a stack or two. So let me go down here and the last thing I want to show you for right now 
is what I have planned for the next episode. So I do have uh, quite a bit of setup that went into this. I've got a mob room set up down here with some lamps from uh, Project Red. And I've got one here. So when we have these lamps on, uh, this room is all lit up. There's no spawnable space inside. And I, again, I love the, uh, the secret levers. I just click there and those all turn off. And that will actually turn on this uh, mob farm once we make the cursed earth down below. Okay. Uh, I've put dirt in this floor because we're going to turn this all into cursed earth. And if you want to see the range of your uh, mob crusher, which I have set up here, you just click on this little show hide working area. And with the copper range add-on tier 4, which is it's just uh, the 6 copper, couple of plastics, and a glass pane. And that gives you the range add-on tier 4. And there's all different tiers, but this one happened to fit nicely in this room. So this guy will see all of wherever you see this green line. So I've made the room just big enough so that all of this in here will be able to be uh, uh, seen by this mob crusher and it'll kill any hostile mobs that spawn into this room. Now the other block I have set up over here is a mob duplicator and this thing's pretty cool. If I make one of these little Pokemon balls, uh, which is a mob imprisonment tool, uh, that's just four plastics around a gas tier. And let me see if I can make one of those real quick. Do I have a gas tier? Uh, it does not look like I have a gas tier. If I spelled it correctly, I would. I do have one. So let me see. If I go here, just like this. There we go. I have now a mob imprisonment tool. Now... Uh, let's do something a little bit dangerous. Uh, let me grab, I also, while I was in the nether, captured a wither skeleton. Okay, so I'm going to place him down with the wand, and then I'm going to pick him up with the mob imprisonment tool. And let's see, I'll just do this guy with you guys here on camera. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, let me see, can I shoot him over there? Oh. Ah, oh, oh, there he is. Oh gosh, it says there's no, I got the wither a little bit. So anyway, he's gone from the capturing wand. Now he's in the mob imprisonment tool. Okay, so I just switched him from uh, from basically one, you know, one mob catcher thingy to another mob catcher thingy. But you can see now it says mob imprisonment tool with wither skeleton. And what you do with this thing is you've got to put some uh, mob essence in here. And then whenever you put the uh, imprisonment tool in, this will clone whatever is inside of here, okay, using essence and uh, RF. So you have to give this block power, okay, and you have to give it mob essence. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. So right now, let me go downstairs and I'll show you what I have hooked up, which is pretty much nothing. All right, uh, I just have the lights hooked up. So there's the lever. And instead of using redstone, I'm using this stuff, which is really cool. This is red alloy wire. And I haven't used any of this since Minecraft 1.2.5, back when I was using uh, red power mod, which was one of my favorite mods back then. And this is the spiritual successor uh, to that mod, which is the... Uh, uh, Red Power, uh, excuse me, no, what is it called? Oh, Project Red. So anyway, I don't want to get into any of the gory details, but basically the mod author for Project Red uh, didn't want anybody working on her uh, code, uh, and also she didn't update it for Minecraft for a very long time. So some other people took it upon themselves to make a very similar mod and using uh, similar ideas and they basically recreated the whole mod pretty much and that's great because that means now it is an open source project everybody can work on it everybody can see the code no secrets and uh, if we look right up here oh well, all we see is that green let me go ahead and I forgot to turn off the uh, uh, the show working area 
so we'll just go back down so these two blocks the crusher the mob crusher and the mob duplicator are going to require power and fluid for this one input power and fluid input this one's more complicated it's actually going to require fluid output power input and item output and as you can see i've only given myself a space here to connect to just the the one item okay uh, just just the one spot at the bottom so we're going to be using a really cool mod it's called xnet xnet and the way this mod works is you make a controller which is made just like that and then you can connect up uh, connectors okay there's uh, basic and advanced connectors I'm not sure what the difference is between the basic and the advanced connectors uh, I think maybe the advanced connectors can connect to more than one block uh, or, and maybe they give you a higher transfer rate uh, possibly but they the connectors are then connected to the controller by a uh, network cable which is pretty cool you it's a very easy recipe just a gold nugget some string redstone and it gets you 16 so if I look in my backpack here is it in the backpack nope it's up here in the um, up one more I put it in the project crate that's right <laughs> okay so I've got uh, facades and I've got a controller and I've got a connector and I've got some network cables so basically the way this works uh, let me just go ahead and show you how it works real quick I'll grab a chest uh, just one nope two I'll grab two chests so I'll put a chest down one here and one here and then let's grab some items let's just grab something at random okay here's some iron bars and I'm gonna put iron bars over here into this chest okay so there's 20 iron bars there what we're going to do is we put down a controller and this one actually does have some power in it but as you can see it uses power and it's slowly draining off its power and then what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the connectors let me see did I have yeah I had some already played with so I can hook a connector here okay and I can hook a connector here and then I can take the network cables and I can connect those two connectors together just like this just shift click it okay and then those network cables will need to be connected to one more connector which will be connected to the controller just like that so now the controller should be able to see both of those chests and sure enough if we look in here we can see one is position uh, minus seven five four two and one is seven five four seven okay and let's see if you don't know which ones which you can on these connectors you can name the items so you could name this one uh, south just like that and then you can name this one over here north just like that and I, I think that's south and that's north uh, but then when you come in here you can actually see this one is called connector north and south so we did put the items in the north uh, chest now also it says double click to highlight if I double click you see that it flashes a red box around it so that you can tell what item that you're looking at it's really cool there's the other one and there's the controller so now this could look a little bit complicated uh, of an interface if you're not familiar with it but basically you just have to think about what do you want to do I want to take 20 iron bars out of this chest and I want to put them into this chest so I need to set up a channel channel one is going to be and uh, you just you just have it set up here you don't need to change any of this stuff if, if you want it to just run normally uh, but you can set priority round robin uh, round robin distributes uh, more evenly it's not perfect uh, and you can also uh, copy uh, 
the channel or you can copy the and and then paste uh, the settings elsewhere so basically what you want to do is you want to click on this uh, little piece on this channel this little button here and you want to create a connection and this one we would like not to be insert but extract we're going to extract a single item let's change this to every uh let's see every 100 ticks which i think is five seconds so we'll do one iron bar will come out of this every five seconds uh all of this stuff down here you can play with on your own but if you want to filter it you can make it a uh, blacklist and if you put items in here it'll pull everything but those items you can also change it uh well if you engage that it's a blacklist if you don't it's a white list so it will only pull out whatever is listed here. If it's nothing, it'll ignore that and it'll pull anything. So we want to extract from there and we want to insert. So we have to create another connection and we want to insert into that chest. That's it. Okay. It should already be doing it. So there's two. See, I'm taking out of here. That goes down every five seconds. It takes one and there's three. And it's basically just going, this is telling this connector to pull one from there and put it in here and every five seconds it'll do that until it's all gone now i can also go to here and tell it to do stacks every 10 game ticks and that obviously would very quickly pull out all of the items so watch as soon as i put those in boom they're gone and they're over here so this thing can work uh, very quickly all right, so that's a basic tutorial on how this works. And then off camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this up for a different. Uh, oh, you know what? I guess I could show you one more thing. Uh, you can set this one is an item channel. OK, this one, uh, you can tell it what to be logic, storage, item, fluid, energy. So this actually will transfer items, fluid, and energy all through one connection. So for those blocks that we have for our mob farm uh, that have multiple things, we can actually insert or pull fluids and insert or pull energy or insert and pull items all from this one connector. And that makes it so that we can have a really clean uh, build downstairs and we don't have to use a bunch of fussy uh, fluid pipes and item ducts and stuff like that. So I'll go ahead and hook this up uh, off camera and I've got to set up a couple more things and then once I'm done with that I'll come right back and I'll show you how our mob farm is going to work. Alright guys so I'm just getting ready to uh, finish this up and I thought I would show you this uh, framing table from the storage drawers. Uh, I see a lot of people using storage drawers but I'm not sure a lot of people know how to use uh, this framing table and it's actually really simple uh, all you have to do I'm going to take these out you have to make some of these framed drawers you put them in here and you can see it's just a, uh, a frame it's not it's not a full drawer on its own and I don't even think you can actually use it uh, on its own but for aesthetic purposes uh, I have chosen to take and make the outside part of it out of this sky stone and uh, as you can see that looks pretty cool it could be used just like that by itself uh, but then I thought well We've, we've been using a lot of spruce, so why don't we go ahead and try spruce on here. And you can actually change the inside uh, separately from the outside. Uh, you can also change, if you want, just the uh, top frame and the front portion. And then this block will be the faces of it, which also looks pretty cool. But I wanted to, to do the majority of it out of the uh, sky stone. And then all you got to do is go in here and then take out, you can shift click and you get your framed drawers. So let me go ahead and put these last couple in and uh, we'll head down here and I'll show you what I have hooked up. So right now we've got a set of storage drawers over here and I actually, I'm not sure exactly how many items uh, that we are going to get from our mob farm. So I just figured we'll have as many uh, spots as possible and then as we need to we can put in upgrades or void upgrades so that if we have uh, too many stacks of a certain thing that we don't really need a lot of like I don't know spider eyes for instance 
something that you get a lot of zombie flesh things like that we can either choose to make some uh, upgrades which are right up here so you can do you know uh, some pretty cheap ones are actually the iron and the gold even the gold uh, allows you to store eight times the base value and just for the sheer number of items I thought I'll go ahead and do the two by twos again some items we're only going to get a little bit of and I'll try to put the you know the big items all in one that way we can do the uh, storage upgrades and then on the smaller items we'll keep those uh, together in each one as well so that we don't have to do so many upgrades I think that'll work out pretty good so all I've done is I've added a drawer controller here and connected that up to our XNet the XNet's connected up here to the uh, mob duplicator and the mob crusher and then over here I basically I just have these three items set up I've got our controller which we can see all of the items that it's connected to I've got a drum so that we can kind of have a buffer and storage of excess uh, mob essence and I've got a trash can so that anything that we get in our drawer in our drawer system over here that's kind of filling up the system like uh, I don't know if we're going to get broken armor or swords and things like that that I really just don't want at all uh, what we can do is if we see those popping up over here we can pull them out okay and we can put them in the filter or uh, not putting it into the storage storage drawer or we can put it into the filter for the uh, trash can and that'll actually uh, throw the items away now I do want to show you guys one more thing and that is this guy right here this is a power cell this is from RF tools and let me just show you the uh, power cell recipe which is right here uh, nope that's the advanced one this one right here it requires four redstone blocks diamond and emerald and prismarine now obviously I haven't taken on any uh, kind of a uh, uh, ocean monument or anything like that in our playthrough so far so I got the prismarine by this action right here which is using the atomic reconstructor you can convert nether quartz into prismarine shards uh, which is really cool and that's how I was able to make these power cells now these power cells are pretty cool and again we're just using our windmill power for right now but I suspect that probably in the next episode we'll be having to upgrade our power system so what I've done is wrong floor over time I hook this up uh, this is another power cell and I have this one set to input so you can have none which will disconnect it input or output just like that so I have this one selected at input I put a, a immersive engineering connector connected it up to our capacitor bank over here so slowly uh, over the time while I was working on other stuff the windmill has been um, charging this up now see how it says capacity uh, 2 million RF yeah I have a couple of more of these uh, guys what did I do with them uh, I think they're in the thing down there but these hold one each 1 million but if you put in a power cell card that connects it to a network these actually act like wireless uh, power so that cell that I placed down in the basement down here is actually connected to the other one wirelessly it has 1 million as well and whenever you see the total capacity whatever's collected to uh, excuse me whatever's connected to link ID 2 all of that's going to be in here if I place down another one and I give it another card it'll say 3 million RF storage and if I do another one it'll say 4 million so on and so forth but this is a wireless way of transferring power from one place to another and it itself acts as a uh, capacitor bank so it has a storage and I believe if I hook this up here yep it charges this but I can't send power to anything yet because I need to put one more connector and I need to set up a channel for that as well so now I've got everything hooked up that we need for our mob farm uh, except for really a way to easily turn it on and off uh, but we'll worry about that later but for right now all we have to do is come in here and set up these channels 
and I'll try to do this with you uh, just as simply as possible. First things first, I would like to take power. So I need to set up channel one. Uh, let's see, do I even know what is channel one? It doesn't tell me what channel one is. So if I remove it, I'm gonna make it energy. It was already on energy, create. Okay, so one is energy. So where do I want energy to go? I want it to come from this one. I want to extract energy from the power cell and I want to insert energy into the mob crusher and I want to insert energy into the mob duplicator and that's it. Those are the only blocks that are going to require power. The controller does require power but because we set the power cell down right next to it here uh, it, it's going to transfer directly so we don't actually have to add it to the channel now I've just noticed if we look here yep it only took just a little bit of power and nothing is using power right now because there are no mobs upstairs so the next thing that we're going to do is where do we want our uh, fluid to go let's set up a channel here for channel 2 we'll select fluid create the channel and then this fluid channel we're going to take from the mob crusher so I want to extract from the mob crusher um, every operation is 20 ticks and that's one second so 20 ticks is one second and I want to insert into two places so I want to insert into the mob duplicator and I want to insert into this uh, iron drum right here and what I'd like to do is I'd like to give the priority to the mob duplicator. So I'm going to give it a priority on this channel of one. And then on this one, I will leave the, wait, is that correct? No, I want one here. And then this one we would have left at zero. I just hadn't clicked on it. That's okay. Uh, so now the fluid that comes out of the mob crusher will prefer to go into the mob duplicator first once this is full and it can't go in any more fluid then the rest of it will go into the iron drum and if we need to if we run out of capacity we can upgrade the iron drum later uh, or we can just spawn more mobs all right so the next thing that we need to do is we need to take care of our items and the items are going to come uh, on their own channel here that's going to be item channel and they're going to come out of the mob crusher so we need to create and for this one create and we're going to extract I would like to pull stacks and each operation it's going to pull uh, a stack every 10 ticks so every half a second it's going to try to pull out a stack of items and it's going to insert them into the drawer controller and the trash can okay for this one for the trash can I'm going to set it at the higher priority okay so I'll set it at a priority of one and then the drawer controller will be at a priority of zero now why would I want things to prioritize going into the trash can first and then going into the drawer controller well the reason for that is because if the items are going into the drawer controller as the higher priority then it'll try to put everything in the drawer controller until it's full and then only then it will put things into the trash can what I want to do is I want to set the trash can up on a uh, whitelist so I want to put items in here that I want to go in and only those items will go in and they'll go into the trash can first and then all of the rest of the items will go in here into the uh, drawer controller so for right now, uh, just to get this started, I can just grab any item. It doesn't matter what. I'm never going to get iron bars. But if I put iron bars in there, that's this is a white list for iron bars. So only iron bars will go into this trash can. And some may ask, well, what if you fill up all of these with the different items? That's very simple. Just add another trash can and add another one and you can put them on the same uh, higher priority so you can make sure that they're on a priority of uh, one where did I, did I put that in the wrong spot 
Where did I put that? Iron bar. <laughs> I did. I put it in the drawer controller. That's not where I want it. I want it in the trash can. So we'll put it here. Just like that. And now you have a whitelist set up for this trash can. The rest of the items will all go into the drawer. And for right now, uh, I actually do have a drawer key in my tool bag. Let me grab that. And the way the drawer key works is you can uh, right click on the controller and it'll lock all of these drawers. Now, nothing can go into these drawers except for I keep hearing water and I just realized it's raining outside. <laughs> I thought it was in real life, but not, uh, it's in the game. So if I right click on that, see how it gets a little lock icon here. Nothing can go in here unless there's the item is already in it. So I do want to lock these drawers, but I'm only going to lock it after we start getting items in and then start, uh, you know, sorting out what's going to be kept, what's going to be kept where, and then once we do that, we can also, uh, if we have the key here, like let's say I get zombie flesh and bones and uh, gunpowder and string. We know we're going to get tons of that stuff. I'll put those in this one drawer and then lock the one drawer and let the other item just kind of go wherever. And I think the way this normally works is, is it'll start off really close to the drawer controller. So as it's searching for an open spot, it'll go into the first available open slots. So then it'll start working its way down uh, as it goes here. So I definitely don't want to lock everything. I'm just going to leave everything unlocked for now. And then I'll go through and uh, lock that up. So the only other thing that we have to do uh, to get our mob farm going is uh, now is to, uh, you know, we need mobs. Where are we going to get mobs from? So in the room here, if I were to uh, turn off this light, okay, and go 24 blocks away, we will get uh, mob spawns in here naturally, except for we have a mega torch, which means there's no mobs that can spawn in this area within, uh, and I believe I said 32 block radius before. I checked the config though, and in this pack, it's actually set up to 128 blocks. So that mega torch is really powerful and there's no mobs within 128 block radius of this place. So we're safe, uh, completely safe. So let me go ahead and turn this light back on. Uh, now with the light on, this guy will try to duplicate mobs as long as it is turned on. If I pause it, it will not try to, and it'll even say that it's paused. And I would like to try to figure out a way to turn this on and off uh, with a switch remotely. Uh, but one of the ways that you can do it is you can just have the mob crusher on and then you can just kind of reach in uh, if I can. Oh, it's just far enough. I'd have to hop in here and grab out the uh, Pokemon ball uh, mob imprisonment tool. Uh, that'll stop it from operating as well. But I can try to figure out something else to get this. There's a way you can give a redstone signal uh, and have it turn off. And also, I'm not sure about the placement, if it's okay to have it where it is or if it needed to be higher or in the floor. I'm not really sure about that, but I'm really hoping that I don't have mobs uh, spawning uh, down in the control room down here. Uh, because if they do, that's going to be a problem. I'll, I'll have to uh, check that out after some experimentation. But yeah, so how are we going to get mobs in here if we don't have all of that? Well, while I was in there and collecting that wither skeleton that I have in the mob imprisonment tool. I also killed a few uh, wither skeletons and we did get ourselves uh, one more drop of evil. I actually got two, uh, but here is one drop of evil. Now this drop of evil is pretty cool. If I click on this dirt, it's gonna turn this dirt into cursed earth, okay? And you wanna make sure that this dirt isn't touching any dirt outside or it would sometimes creep out and, and go that far as to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you what that looks like. Just like that. So now this room is filled with cursed earth. Cursed earth ignores the mega torch. So if it's dark in here, it's going to spawn mobs and the mobs are nastier than the normal mobs. They are stronger than the normal mobs. 
and they also will despawn if they haven't been killed or dealt with within so many seconds I believe and also they ignore the mob spawning distance so they will spawn even if I am standing right here in this room they will spawn all over the place the only way to stop them from spawning is light and so the only reason we don't have tons of mobs in here right now is because we have this light turned on but if I turn this light off let's let's just check and make sure so I've got power here and this every single time uh, it, it runs it's going to use 40 RF per tick so I don't believe our windmill power is gonna run this for very long let's just go ahead and turn it on and we'll see what happens Oh, by the way, I also forgot to mention, sorry, uh, this is dark ineffable glass. This glass, you can see through it, and you can walk through it, but mobs can't, okay? And it, it's, it's dark glass, so it doesn't let light through. So even though there's light on this side, uh, once I turn off these lights, it's completely dark inside. I can't believe I totally forgot to mention that. But really quickly, I'll just show you that the uh, dark glass is uh, a added by uh, the extra utilities here's the dark glass and then you just make some of that and then the dark ineffable glass is just the moonstone here in the middle with this around now I found a bunch of these moonstones while I was mining which were plenty to uh, make what I have up here however if you need to make them it's pretty simple you can just set up a um, uh, one of those this is just lapis I uh, believe yeah that's in a resonator and that just goes around a diamond to make a moonstone and this resonator is something that we we'd already used uh, to make a couple of things uh, in the past we're gonna be using it a little bit more as well when we get ready to do some you know creative flying and ring of the squid and uh, angel ring and things like that I definitely do want to do those and we're probably gonna do those in the next episode but in the meantime when you turn the lights off here, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but look, there's a creeper right there, okay? And there's a, there's a bunch of mobs spawning in there, spiders, skeletons, I see spiders, I don't know what that guy was. Uh, these guys are wearing armor from Flans Mod, it looks like, so I bet you that's going to be some junk that we're going to have to get rid of. But there's going to be a chance also for witches once in a while to spawn in here and also Enderman and I tell you right now the Enderman is the number one thing that I'm after because I really do want to get some more Ender Pearls that's gonna get us uh, uh, into a lot more mods so let's just go ahead and turn this light on now and that'll turn off our mob farm and let's go downstairs and see what happened uh, to our energy I want to see what happened to the energy okay um, it looks like it didn't even take a hit on our energy but that's because we were pulling everything from our capacitor bank upstairs uh, we were able to just during that very short time we were able to collect four buckets of mob essence so if we wanted to we could start using our mob duplicator and then look at this look at all of this stuff that we've got already we've got cobwebs we've got uh, zombie flesh we've got a solid the solidified experience um, what's this thing we've got gunpowder so now we can make more bullets for our guns we've got a blizz rod which is great this is actually uh, spawning in mobs from other mods which is awesome and then thanks to flans we're getting um, some of this stuff so we got swap body armor what's this uh, we've got French uh, gig giggity pants <laughs> that's pretty funny we've got a world war ii helmet and we've got a world war ii coat and some of this stuff is pretty cool uh so i might go ahead and let it uh come in and then we might just set up a separate thing for armor but chances are because of the mbt data which would be the usage in the durability uh maybe that's not the same thing uh, but uh the durability or mbt data will cause these to not stack so even if I got another American World War II helmet only that one helmet with that at one exact damage value will go into our uh, storage drawers here so the rest of them would just clog up the system so I'm thinking that we're gonna come over here to the controller and we're gonna go to our trash can channel 
We don't need the iron bars in there now because we have some stuff we really do want to. And here we would like to put in the helmet. And I believe this is set up to already ignore damage value and the trousers. And there's so many different kinds. I'm pretty sure we're going to need um, even more uh, filtration. So uh, I'll let this run again for a little more and we'll see what we come up with. But I'm going to go ahead for now and throw away this uh, junk armor. We definitely don't need it. And I'm going to let it run and we're going to see, watch what happens to our, our, our power. So I'm going to turn this on and then we're going to jump up to our capacitor bank and let's see how fast that's draining out. Okay, so I'm taking a look at our capacitor bank and it looks like we're losing about a thousand RF every few seconds. And sometimes it's a little bit quicker because I believe every time that machine downstairs kills a mob that it costs 40 RF. I believe that's how that works but yeah you can see this guy is draining out pretty quickly and if we left our mob farm to run for uh, at this rate probably it would last about five minutes uh, between five and ten minutes um, because all of this is going to feed into the power cell all obviously the power cell is not going to show any drain on it uh, really because it's going to be draining out and then getting back in at a rate of 256 uh, 256 RF per tick because the maximum on this connector is 256 RF per tick so that is the maximum uh, throughput so we're not using 200 more than 256 per tick obviously because this guy is not draining if it was this guy would be draining uh, and it's pretty much keeping up to the, you know, 19999 and then a few RF. So, uh, yeah, that's that's not going to be an issue as far as how many. But this guy only produces 20 RF a tick. So with all of the stuff that we have in our basement, uh, with the, uh, the producing of the plastic and the little storage system that we have set up, I think that's going to be already too much for this system to keep up with but I will run that mob farm for a little while until this starts to run down so we're already below half on this one and that was only after a couple of minutes so two four six eight ten twelve you know maybe 15 maybe 20 minutes we can run our mob farm and then that thing will be completely drained out uh, but in the meantime, let's go down here and see how we're doing. Look, we've already got four Ender Pearls, and also we've got a Nebulous Heart, which is from the Enderman as well. And those can be turned into, um, uh, I think, three Ender Pearls. If you have one of those, you can craft that into three Ender Pearls. So that's great. Ender Pearls are really where it's at as far as uh, getting us uh, going. So check it out. Bows of all different kinds need to get filtered into the trash can so we need to whitelist the bow and that way no more bows will go into the system uh, they'll go straight into the trash so I'll grab out these bows okay and you can already see there's so many different kinds there's World War II armor there's British armor uh, German SKS uh, special forces World War II and modern armor uh from from the different uh flans mod armor stuff and i don't mind that i think that's okay but it just means that we're going to have to have a more extensive uh, filtration system for our mob farm so i don't need what's that green nerf knee pads again thanks a lot flans we don't need nerf knee pads uh, but we will love to have sticks and we love to have bones and these creeper uh, i think these these are Reaper hearts, catalyzing glands, those turn into gunpowder as well. So we're going to have all of the bullets for our gun, which is really great because the bullets take one iron and one gunpowder per. 
for our uh, Winchester. So let me go ahead and uh, throw away these bows. Okay, and I feel like we're probably going a little long on the episode already, so I'll probably wrap it up here pretty quick, and then we'll jump into the next one, because I'm going to have to spend some time figuring out how to filter out all this stuff. Not only do we have Flan's armor, but we also have vanilla armor. There's a leather tunic. So we're going to have to get rid of all of that stuff out of our system and then rearrange the stuff that we do want to keep. Uh, I almost think I'd like to set up another separate storage drawer just for this solidified XP because we are going to get a ton of this solidified XP uh, from this uh, mob farm setup. But as you can see right now, we are already almost full on our storage drawers because of all that armor and stuff. And uh, looks like this is keeping up pretty well. I want to make sure the mob crusher uh, stays empty. And then, yeah, we've already got 63 buckets of uh, stuff here. So guys, this is a completely effective uh, mob farm design. It is, uh, I think it's probably one of the more standard types of mob farms uh, in modded. Uh, anybody that's using the, uh, uh, let's see, what is it? Extra utilities, I believe that adds the uh, drop of evil or is it drop? Extra, yeah, extra utilities. That's what gives you the cursed earth. So anybody running that, you're going to be uh, using a cursed earth mob farm starting off with. And it's just going to give you so many of the most valuable mob resources. Especially um, right now, I was really wanting more gunpowder and needing a lot more gunpowder. So let's see, we've already got 134 gunpowder. So I'm actually going to take a stack of gunpowder right now uh, and oh, I don't need to go anywhere because I've got this cool tablet thingy and I'm well actually I will so let me grab some iron I'll grab a stack of iron as well and we are going to go right now because that is the one thing that I really really wanted for our gun which was more ammo we need more 30-06 uh, and it's one per I am going to stand here. I'm going to craft up an entire stack of 30 out six shells I believe they only stack to 32 So we'll get two stacks of 32 and Now we have loads of ammo for our lovely Winchester model 70 and we can just shoot all day long and that way when I go into the Okay, you don't need to shoot the door when you're trying to open it. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> uh, but yeah, so when I go into the nether, now I don't have to worry about being conservative with my ammo uh, when it comes to shooting ghasts and uh, nitro creepers. Uh, and every time you shoot a ghast or a nitro creeper, you get more gunpowder. So it's a win-win uh, situation. More gunpowder means more bullets. More bullets means more chaos i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> i'm just having so much fun you guys all right so i'm gonna let that run for a minute and i will see you guys later i am see you later thanks for coming to hang out and i'll see you later guys have a good time bye bye oh i was trying to wave with a gun in my hand bye bye